Hi everyone, this is Andrew. During my first year in Japan, I was working for a private company as a conversational English teacher, and luckily for us,、uh, the company provided discounted accommodation to all its employees. Now, the only drawback was that we couldn't choose our flatmates. The place was very convenient; like we were in the heart of Osaka, it was only a, maybe a ten-minute subway trip to our office. The area was safe. The apartment was clean.、Uh, it was quite a new building, and so everything was good. Except that I had no choice over who was living with me. Now, at first, that was okay because、uh, both the guys that I started living with had travelled with me on the same plane, and they were both from Australia.、Uh, they were both older than me. I was only 22 at the time. One of them was 38, and the other one was 52. But we got on well, at least initially, and things started off fairly fine and dandy. Now, what happened? Those two guys eventually didn't see eye to eye. They started having fights and so on, and one of them ended up having to leave. The older guy. So here came my first experience with a change of flatmate. Now, the new guy was from Scotland. His name was Graham, and he was a nice guy. Well, initially, but then I could probably say that almost everybody I met in Japan was nice, at least. At first, so it's probably not such a great compliment anymore because most people are nice when you first meet them. Anyway, he had one major problem: he liked his drink. He drank too much alcohol. Now he wasn't always drunk, of course not,、um, but after work he wouldn't mind having a bit of a tipple. And in the first few weeks, this never caused much of a problem. However, a couple of weeks into his stint, he、uh, got a bit excited. I guess that he was in Japan, and he decided to go out and have a big night out. He went out, and I guess he drank to excess. I was in bed because I had to get up early for work the next morning. At around midnight or soon after, I was awoken by the sounds of somebody fumbling for their keys. Then I heard like keys falling off, and then I heard, "Oh fuck!" <laughs> and you know, I heard these sort of things coming from the front door. Anyway, he managed to get inside, and he was stumbling about. He slammed the door shut, and stumbling down the hallway, and knocking things over, and all the rest of it. And I thought,、oh, "I'll just be patient with him. He's only been here fairly recently." Anyway, this one went on for about thirty、uh, minutes, and I was getting a bit frustrated because I thought I need to get to sleep here, and he's just making a big racket. But I didn't get up; I just let him go for it. Anyway, doors were opening, doors were shutting. He was obviously trying to make、uh, make himself a snack or something. And finally, I got to sleep.、Uh, he must have got to sleep too, I assume. And I woke up fairly early, maybe around six thirty in the morning. I thought I'd better、uh, go check on him, so I went put my ear to his door, and I heard that he was snoring. So I guess he was okay. And then I decided to go to the toilet. Now the toilet was a sort of a self-contained toilet within its own sort of room.、Um, I opened the toilet door and I noticed inside, on the shelf above the toilet, there was three cans of unopened lager. So there were three cans of beer, but I didn't think much of it. I just assumed that he had left them there last night in his drunken stupor. Anyway, I went to prepare breakfast in the kitchen, which was kind of right next door to the toilet. And so I opened the fridge and、uh, got some stuff out of there. And the freezer was part of the fridge, just like the lower half of the fridge was the freezer. So I pulled open the freezer drawer, and inside I noticed a strange frozen yellow liquid, like a clear yellow orangey liquid. And I thought, oh, geez, what's that? I thought, oh, maybe some juice or something has fallen down, or somebody had accidentally dropped something in there. I don't know. So I checked the fridge up above to see if there was anything knocked over, and see if there's anything dripping in the fridge. No, and there was nothing. And then I had a quick look at the freezer, and I thought,、oh, there's no way, there's nothing really connecting these two together anyway. Even if we did drop something, so I thought, oh, geez, what's going on here? And then I started to put two and two together. There was the toilet room, and inside there was some beer up on the shelf. And、then right next door there was the fridge freezer, and inside the freezer there was a strange yellow liquid. I could only think of one possible scenario: the Scotsman had pissed in the freezer. He'd mistaken the toilet for the fridge, and the freezer for the toilet. I don't know how he did it, but I guess he was drunk, very drunk. Anyway, I had a couple of hours to think about how I was going to broach the topic with him、uh, before he woke up. He probably woke up about eight thirty. I didn't have to get into work until about ten thirty, I think. So I had time to have a quick discussion with him, but I waited until he had 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 his morning coffee. He stumbled out into the kitchen and was fumbling about making himself a coffee, and then he was going, "Oh boy, I had a good night last night. Yeah, it sounded like it. Oh yeah. Ah,、oh, geez, sorry about the racket. I just, oh, geez, I came home and I could barely find anything. Yeah, no, that's all right. That's all right. Ah,、uh, yeah. Anyway, Graham, I got to tell you about something. Oh yeah, what what's that? He goes, "Oh look, I checked in the freezer." 
sorry, first of all, I told him about the beer. I said, oh, look, in the, in the toilet, there was these beer cans. Oh, geez, oh, I wonder why they're there. Um, oh, I don't remember bringing any beer home. I thought, oh, anyway, they were there. Oh, yeah, yeah, fair enough. And in the freezer, so I opened up the freezer compartment. I hadn't cleaned it up because I thought I have to show him. I showed him the liquid and he, go, he looked inside and he looked closely at it and you could see that he was racking his brain trying to think of what could that possibly be. And then he kind of looked up at me and said, oh, I guess it's juice, is it? I went, well, that's what I first thought too. He goes, oh, yeah, it's probably, it's probably just dripped down from the, uh, free, from the fridge. And I thought, well, maybe, but I couldn't see any sort of uh, juice bottles that were leaking or anything like that. He looked inside and he goes, oh, yeah, but it's got to be juice, doesn't it? It's got to be juice. What else could it be? Anyway, he walked off and uh, I think he went to get changed. And I thought, okay, I'll start to get changed myself. And then he came back out and I said, oh, look, I've got to worry that it might be, uh, you know, it might be that somebody's relieved themselves in the freezer. And he looked at me and said, no, that couldn't be. No worries. No way. No way. And I said, well, what else can it be? And I said, it wasn't there last night when I was cooking dinner, and the only thing that's happened since then is uh, you've come home drunk, and uh, now there's a yellow liquid there. And he goes, mm, look, I can't remember putting anything in there. There's not a damn thing that could be. I said, then he said, oh, maybe it's beer. Maybe he put a beer in there. I said, well, so you're saying that you opened up a beer, and you opened up the freezer, and you tipped it in the freezer. And he goes, oh, well, that's got to be it. I mean, what else can it be? Anyway, he said, don't worry, don't worry, he'll clean it up, and so he did, and I saw him <laughs> putting water in there and chipping out some of the ice and tipping it into the sink, and he goes, he, sm he said he smelt it, and he goes, oh, yeah, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely some type of beer. But quite frankly, if he had been drinking so much, probably his piss smells like beer too, so I had no, <laughs> I didn't really trust his uh, intuition at that time. Anyway, about a week later, we were out uh, having noodles, I think, and we were with uh, another colleague, and suddenly this uh, yellow ice story came up in conversation again. And then he started saying, oh yeah, he'd come home drunk and he tipped one of his beers into the freezer and uh, it caused some yellow ice at the bottom and he had a good laugh about it and all the rest of it. And he was stating as if it was true, but I knew for a fact he had no memory of that event. So I think he was covering up the fact that he probably did piss in the freezer, but he didn't want to admit that. And I just brought that up because I you know I had a couple of beers and I said, oh, look, it's really, it probably is possible that you did piss in the freezer, you know. And he goes, no, that's just ridiculous, as if anybody would do that. And he kind of just flat out denied it and said that was just an impossibility. It's not possible that that could have happened. So I never brought that story up with him again, but I did tell some other people and we all had a good laugh about it. And it was quite, most people agreed that it was probably piss in the freezer. So what did I learn from this little experience? Well, one, uh, never live in accommodation where you have no say over the, your choice of flatmates. And two, uh, never have a fridge next to the toilet unless you want a drunken Scotsman to piss in your freezer. Cheers.